Forum, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I want to begin by zooming out because it is not possible to understand our final months in Afghanistan without viewing them in the context of the 20 years that led up to them. Anyone who says the last few months were a failure but everything before that was great clearly hasn't been paying attention. In 2015, the Taliban conquered its first province since 2001. By October 2018, the Afghan government controlled only 54 percent of the 407 districts. And by May 2020, the Afghan government controlled less than a third of Afghan's 407 districts. We poured money and support and air cover, and the Afghan government continued to fail. By 2021, it was clear that 2,500 troops could not successfully prop up a government that had been losing ground and support to the Taliban for years. Secretary Austin, I understand that you advised the Pre President Biden to stay in Afghanistan, but as you acknowledge, staying or withdrawing is a decision for the President alone. So I want to focus on what happened next. Once President Biden made the decision to have U.S. forces leave the country, who designed the evacuation? Well, Senator, I, uh, again, um, I, I won't uh, uh, address what I advise, uh, the advice I gave the president. I would just say that uh, in, his, in his calculus, uh, this was not risk-free, and uh, the Taliban, as we said earlier in this, uh, in this hearing, uh, were committed to uh, recommencing their operations against our forces. Uh, his assessment was that in order to sustain that and continue to do things uh, uh, that, that benefited the Afghans, uh, that would require at some point that he increase uh, uh, the presence, uh, our presence there in Afghanistan. So once he made the decision, uh, then, of course, from a military perspective, uh, in, in terms of the retrograde uh, of the people and the equipment, uh, that, was, that planning was done. Uh, uh, by Central Command and certainly principally by, uh, by General Miller. Okay. Very, very detailed planning. And, uh, and then we came back and briefed the entire interagency on, on the details of that plan. Okay, so the military planned the evacuation. Did President Biden follow your advice on executing on the evacuation plan? He, he did. Did President Biden give you all the resources that you needed? From my view, he did. Did President Biden ignore your advice on the evacuation at any point? No, Senator, he did not. Did he refuse any request for anything that you needed or asked for? Uh, no. So the president followed the advice of his military advisors in planning and executing this withdrawal. As we've already established, the seeds for our failure in Afghanistan were planted many, many years ago. So let me ask you one more question, Secretary Austin. Knowing what you know now, if we had stayed in Afghanistan for another year, would it have made a fundamental difference? Again, it depends on what size you remain in at and, and uh, what your objectives are. Uh, there are a range of possibilities, uh, but, uh, but if you stayed there at 20, at the, at a uh, force posture of 2,500, uh, certainly you'd be in a fight with the Taliban, well, and, uh, and you'd have to reinforce yourself. I, I appreciate you're looking at it as a fighter, but I would also add one more year of propping up a corrupt government and an army that wouldn't fight on its own was not going to give us a different outcome. And anyone who thinks differently is either fooling himself or trying to fool the rest of us. I believe President Biden had it exactly right. Withdrawing was long overdue. The withdrawal was conducted in accordance with the advice of his military advisors who planned and executed every step of this withdrawal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.